Deferred Remuneration When you start home cleaning or get ready for school so that later you can reward yourself with a well-deserved rest, you apply the concept of a deferred remuneration. The opposite approach is procrastination. This is when you are lying on the couch with a charger in your phone and soon, well, really soon, you will get to your important errands. Wow, here's a video I beat myself in the face and douse with cola. Interesting. <coughs> So, what was I talking about? Oh right, deferred remuneration. There is an opinion that the ability to postpone pleasures for later is quite a skill that leads to success. And it is not just an opinion, but a proven scientific fact. And if you wonder what does it have to do with American scientists, four-year-old children, and a marshmallow, then don't switch the channel. We're about to begin. At the end of 1960, a group of scientists at Stanford University led by Walter Michel conducted an experiment in which as many as 653 students from Stanford Kindergarten took part. Now imagine a room, a table, a few chairs, and a child sitting on one of them. Now an assistant comes in with whom the child recently played toys and puts a plate with one marshmallow or any other sweet on the table. The child is about to treat themselves, but then the assistant offers them a truly diabolical deal. Hang on, youngster, I have a business proposal for you. I'll go away for a while, but if you wait for me and don't eat this piece of marshmallow, I will bring you another. But if you won't be able to resist, ring this bell. I'll be back quickly and you will eat your marshmallow. The message is clear. You can either have one now or two later. Of course, there were those who couldn't even ring the bell before tasting the marshmallow. Most of the children couldn't control their desires, and sooner or later, they rang the bell and ate the marshmallow. Only a third of the participants could hold out for 15 minutes to get their prize. The initial goal of the experiment was to understand what happens to a person when they struggle with the desire to get the reward here and now. Well, for now, I will leave out this part of the study since we are interested in something else. Unexpected results soon began to show. Throughout the school period, Walter Michel was asking his daughter about how the guys from her class were doing. Those were the children who participated in the experiment. And at some point, when connections began to form in Michel's head, he decided to contact the parents of these children, or rather students at that point, to find out how they were doing in school and life in general. And then, the most incredible thing happened. In 1981, he was able to contact 94 parents. He asked a variety of questions about the behavior of the teenagers. For example, he was interested in their ability to plan and solve problems. There were also more measurable indicators. These were the results of a standardized test. For those who don't know, in America, the result of a standardized test, or SAT, acts as a pass to university. In principle, a student can score from 400 to 1,600 points. Obviously, that the better the result, the higher your chances to make it. For example, last year, half of the students scored 1,060 points, and only a fifth could get 1,240 points. What am I leading to? After Walter received the answers from the parents, he discovered that those students who could not control their desire to get a marshmallow here and now, i.e. rang the bell too early, had an average of 210 points less than those who could wait for the reward to double. And 210 points, in fact, could double the chance of them getting in the university. Besides, impatient participants were experiencing problems with socialization. It was more difficult for them to make friends, they had issues with concentration, and struggled with handling stressful situations. And you know, Michelle's group did not stop there. They continued to follow the participants of their initial experiment, and who would have thought that after 30 years they would find out that the ability to put off rewards leads to better physical condition. Having analyzed 164 participants of the experiment, Michelle's group came to the conclusion that every additional minute for which the child managed to resist the temptation almost predicted that their body mass index would be lower by 0.2% when they grow up. Amazingly, those were the conclusions that the scientists had made. On the one hand, it may seem strange that such a minor thing as the ability to have fun when the work is done can affect our lives up to the point of gaining excess weight. It's hard to believe. But on the other hand, just look at the people around you and yourself. Think about it. Who will be more successful in life? 
The one who has a plan for the day and follows a certain path, or the one who cruises by, accidentally reacting to external signals. The one who can turn down the upcoming party because of business, or the soul of the company who won't miss any fun. Or finally, the one who can take their eyes off YouTube, or the one who will click on the next video right after this one. According to Michelle, the ability to put off your reward is like a muscle that can and should be trained since childhood. Ultimately, it will turn you into a better version of yourself and make you into a creator rather than a mere indulger of your desires. And you can start by making your bed. So, are you going to check out another vid? That's it for today, and I'm Boney Wright.